I want to welcome you all to campus and thank you for being here for this memorable and emotional afternoon. I cannot tell you how gratifying it is for my colleagues and me to see such an overwhelming, overwhelming outpouring of support for this remarkable school on the Hill. Even in the short time that I've been here, I've come to realize that this is indeed a special place whose long history deserves to be celebrated, just as the myriad relationships which have been fostered on this campus over the years warrant being renewed and revitalized today. Your presence together on campus in such significant numbers means so much to all of us, and I can't help but think that these hallowed grounds are somehow happy to feel the tread of so many familiar feet. While the decision to close the school was a tremendously difficult one for all involved, I want to take a moment now to thank everyone who has been working so hard these past six months to make sure that we were providing this year's students with the same transformational experience from which students have benefited since we opened our doors well over a century ago. This year's Board of Trustees, the administration, and our phenomenal faculty and staff have dedicated themselves to making this a school year like any other, and yet at the same time, they have worked to acknowledge its historic significance and prepare for the hundreds of tasks that must be done to close this educational institution permanently. It has indeed been a bittersweet undertaking but they have done it with sensitivity and grace. And at this time, I would like to ask anyone who is a current trustee, administrator, or faculty and staff member to please stand so we can acknowledge you for the difficult work you have done this year. Your thoughtful stewardship of this community through a very difficult time is much appreciated, and this grateful school thanks you from the bottom of its heart. I know that you all want to do, what you want to do most today is reacquaint yourselves with friends, classmates, teachers, colleagues, and the campus places where you spent your youth. And I assure you, you will be able to do all of that today. But we also know that you understand the importance of spending some time honoring the history, legacy, and essential purpose of this place that has been so important to generations of people. I would like to now turn the microphone over to our Assistant Head of School for Academic Affairs, Mr. Doug Sepp, to continue the program. Choosing just one of our bright and talented alumni to speak on this occasion seemed almost impossible. But when we were presented with the unique opportunity to hear from Elgin Academy's very first graduate about the school that she remembers, we could not pass that up. Portrayed by Linda Rock, a teacher in Elgin Academy's lower school from 1985 to 1998, please welcome Laura Davidson Sears to the podium. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for inviting me today. I am so pleased to share my recollections of early Elgin Academy with you, as a good portion of my life has been so intertwined with this institution. My Davidson Sears support and regard for the Academy might help you to appreciate its 185 years of rich history and academic excellence. It also may explain the use of the name Sears on campus buildings. My roots with the Academy go back to their very beginnings. I was born in 1854 to Orlando and Caroline Gifford Davidson. You may recognize my mother's maiden name. I am the granddaughter of the founding father of Elgin, James Gifford. 
Grandfather was a driving force behind the creation of the Academy and signed its charter in 1839. He did not have the pleasure of witnessing the school's opening, however, dying in 1850. Elgin Academy opened its doors as non-sectarian and co-educational, not typical of private schools in those days. There were no public schools in Elgin at the time. In fact, few public institutions serving students beyond the elementary level were available in any part of the United States. A partially built structure was purchased on the hill on Park Street, our beloved Old Main. After completing its construction, the doors of Elgin Academy opened on December 1st, 1856. My family continued its support of the Academy after gra grandfather's death. My father, Orlando Davidson, was a trustee on the board during its early years serving more than 40 years in that capacity. I attended the academy and have the privilege of having received its first diploma in 1872. My involvement in the academy continued. After attending Vassar College, I returned to the academy as an instructor in 1877, teaching several subjects. Mathematics was my favorite, I must say. I took pride in inspiring young women to be independent and thoughtful. As a matter of fact, one of the Academy's rhetorical societies was named the Davidsonians in my honor. We Academy females became quite adept at arguing points of view. My marriage to Nathaniel Sears in 1887 created an even stronger commitment to the Academy you see, Nathaniel, or Judge Sears, as he was later addressed, had his own ties to the school on the hill. His father, Amos Sears, served as principal, and his mother, Susan, an instructor from 1870 to 1881. They lived on the east wing of Old Main, as did Nathaniel for a few years as he attended the academy. Our relationship with the Academy was extremely personal. We were influenced by its high standards of quality education and cherished its traditions. We both felt the need to promote its welfare and did so in several ways. Both Judge Sears and I served on the Board of Trustees. I was elected to the board in 1912 and served until my death in 1930. Judge Sears served as trustee from 1920 until his death, 1934. I felt it important to recognize the academic excellence at the Academy. In 1895, I established the Laura Davidson Sears Medal for Proficiency in Mathematics, the award named in my honor by the faculty. In 1906, I created the Susan A. Sears Prize in English in memory of my mother-in-law who first introduced English into the Academy curriculum. Judge Sears and I also recognized the need to financially support our beloved school. We purchased properties in town to add to the original four acres, including an athletic field. We provided funds for the upkeep and improvement of the school's facilities. We funded the construction of the Orlando Davidson Gymnasium and Swimming Pool in 1917, as well as other buildings. Sears Hall was built in 1940 after our death with funds bequeathed to the Academy. I am most proud, however, of the Laura Davidson Sears Academy of Fine Arts. Dedicated in my honor in 1923 and opened 100 years ago in 1924. Our fine collection of American art was also donated to be displayed for viewing by both the Academy and Elgin communities. In her publication, A History of Elgin Academy, 1856 to 1906, 
written in 1906, Academy instructor Lydia Keyes Becker noted the importance of remembering and appreciating our school. I believe we can all benefit from her introductory words. She says, the design of this brief history is to preserve what appears to be a value for future harvests, to pay tribute to character and to good work, to promote the joys reminiscence and to bespeak continued love as the years go by for the old school on the hill. This is my purpose speaking to you today, not to promote Judge Sears and myself, but to share our devotion and high regard for this wonderful institution. May your memories of Elgin Academy be good ones, as good and meaningful as Judge Sears and mine. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sears. We are honored to have you here today. On Memorial Day in 1909, a crowd of 600 people assembled on campus just east of Old Main for the dedication of a peace monument to commemorate the Elgin Academy students and teachers who served in the Union Army of the Civil War. That monument can still be seen in front of Old Main. On this Memorial Day weekend, as our community says goodbye to Elgin Academy, we have asked Ezra Morris, one of our current juniors and an excellent violinist, to play the well-known melody, Ashokan Farewell, to commemorate not just those EA students from the Civil War era, but all the Elgin Academy students, teachers, administrators, trustees, faculty members and parents who are no longer with us.
memorial gardens here on campus which honor deceased members of the academy faculty, administration, staff members, students, and parents. Their locations are detailed for you in the information you were given at the check-in table. We encourage you to spend some time this afternoon visiting those lovely spots as you remember people who are not with us today, but who played significant roles in your own Elgin Academy experiences. Although so many things have changed in the 185 year history of this school, it is essentially the things that have remained the same that draw us here today. Memories of treasured events and rites of passage might have looked a little bit different as the decades progressed, but they have always been the cornerstones of student life on campus. Let your minds wander back to all of those homecomings, school dances, bonfires, proms, choral concerts, art shows, plays and musicals, clubs, trip week, service trips, class trips, field trips, biographer's tea, lower school immersions, stone soup, battle of the books, holiday teas, candle lighting extravaganza, field hockey and volleyball games, tennis and golf matches, football and soccer games, track and cross country meets, basketball, baseball and softball games, ISL championships, state walks, student publications such as newspapers, yearbooks, and literary magazines, academic competitions like Jets, Wise, and Scholastic Bowl, senior pranks, and dunk tanks, faculty breakfasts, baccalaureate dinners, honors convocations, and of course, commencements. These are the kinds of activities and events that the Hilltoppers from the 1870s through today have consistently looked forward to. These traditions have always provided the much needed color detail to school days on the hill. Let us not forget, however, that the essential purpose in guiding principles of Elgin Academy from its founding to the present day has always been an academic one. From then until now, this school has set out to provide, with except, provide students with exceptional opportunities to develop their intellects and academic skills guided by excellent teachers who would help them gain the knowledge and understanding not only to advance their own education, but to better the world. In 1908, the Academy pamphlet expressed it nicely when it listed the Academy's goal as the development of thinkers whose minds are carefully trained and whose characters are distinguished by justice, earnestness, moral force, and mutual helpfulness. As I talk about academics, now is perhaps a good time to pay tribute to the long line of headmasters and heads of schools who have served as the academic leaders of this institution across its history. These are the men and women who have set and steered the Academy's intellectual course, constantly adjusting to keep it straight and true. Being the head of any independent school is a difficult, complicated, and often thankless job and all the individuals who have led this particular academy, whether for one year or for 20, deserve our gratitude. I would now like to introduce two of Elgin Academy's current faculty members, Mr. George Sanchez, our Upper School of Dean of Students, who is finishing his ninth year at Elgin Academy, and Ms. Jennifer Sampson, who is finishing her second year in our middle school and is also an EA alum from the class of 1988. As you know, in recent weeks, we've asked the members of our community to share with us any stories, reminiscences, or messages that express what Elgin Academy has meant to them. Their messages included stories of favorite classes they will always remember, and teachers they loved. Some wrote movingly of how coming to school here changed their lives. We wanted to share some of their words with you today. An alum from the class of 1962 wrote, Coming from a situation where I was failing in education, Elgin Academy saved my life. It was suddenly much easier to become a good student. My GPA went up and I developed skills as a competitive swimmer with Coach Dover. 
I was still very shy, but I developed stronger self-esteem. Belgium Academy was the pivotal turning point in my life, whereby I came into my own and I ended up finishing my education with a doctorate in pastoral psychotherapy. Another 60s alum told us, I attended Elgin Academy from September of 1966 to June of 1968. I boarded in Raymond House, which is now the business office, and very much needed a grounding structure to help guide me forward in life. Whether it was Mr. Lamacher, our math teacher and coach, or Mrs. Krause, our live-in mother at Raymond House, I was guided in a direction that helped me focus and become a more functioning adult. Being 70 now, there have been many moments in my life that I've reflected on and used those moments of structure, discipline, and respect for education that I absorbed during, during my short time at EA. Being a student and resident helped settle my mind and body down to a level where my world was much more in my control and my outcomes became positive and rewarding. From the 1970s, one grad wrote, EA had a wonderful fail in safety framework, which provided a critical foundation for success. There is no question that Mr. Fletcher and EA prepared me well for engineering and graduate school. Another told us that when I graduated from Avery Cooley School after eighth grade, the concept of going away to boarding school was not new to me. My older sisters went out east, but I did not want to do that. The headmaster at Avery Cooley recommended Elgin Academy, a boarding school close to home, but with the feel of an Eastern boarding school. For example, the guys wore coats and ties to class every day. I did a lot of growing up during my four years at EA and consider the period perhaps the four most important years of my life. I will always treasure the friends I made and the great teachers I had who really made a difference in my life. Go Helltoppers. And lest you think that things were all serious and academically oriented during this decade, the following message from a member of the class of 1972 will set the record straight. One night, the whole girls' dorm snuck out and went down the road to the donut shop that was open all night. That's all you need to know other than the fact that we all got in big trouble. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> this message came from a 1980s alum. I graduated in 1981 with many fond memories, mostly revolving around art, chorus, and field hockey. EA's understanding of the of the important part the arts and physical activity play in the healthy development of students was an important part of its holistic college preparatory education for me. From the 90s. The impact of graduating from EA has been enduring. EA instilled in me the confidence to pursue a creative arts degree and ignited my love for the works of Shakespeare. A memorable experience was a fall group trip to the Stratford Festival in Canada, led by Ms. Nancy Santori. This trip marked the first time I saw Shakespeare performed, and it inspired me to set a goal of seeing all 38 Shakespeare plays on stage, a goal I have long since surpassed. This 90s alum speaks for all the many lifelong couples who found each other here at EA. She writes, there are so many stories I could share about my time at EA. It's hard to pick just one. But most importantly, EA is the place where I met my husband and is the foundation of my family. For that, I will forever be grateful to the school. And from the 21st century, I went to Elgin Academy for my entire academic career, and they truly were some of the most important and formative years. I still frequently reflect on our motto of tradition, innovation, and excellence. And I'm continually amazed to see how such simple words have strong relevance in my life. In my time, I was fortunate to connect with many friends, several of whom are still my best friends to this day. 
I currently work as a teacher and often find myself quoting teachers I had at EA during my lessons with students. I am deeply grateful for everything that Elgin Academy had to offer me. Sending love to the class of 2015. EA's teachers, past and present, often talk of how important the relationships they have with their colleagues here on campus are to them and about the importance of mentors they have acquired and become as at Elgin Academy. One of the teachers who was part of the new staff uh, that began the lower school in 1984 said this. Numerous meetings were held in the basement of that church with the two best administrators I've ever had the privilege to work with in my career, Joanne Buck and Tom Croft. These two were passionate about children and their education. They were visionaries for building the new program's philosophical and curricular foundations, and they combined dedication of the and, and the combined dedication of the eight of us was extraordinary. It was a magical time. Finally, we'd like to share a message from a past EA parent of four graduates. She writes. When we were considering EA for our children 27 years ago, we scheduled a campus visit. Our student tour guide was a tall, well-spoken young woman named Adrian. We asked her hard questions and her answers were gracious and competent. When the tour was over, we both looked at each other and said, if our kids come out of this school as well-spoken and insightful as her, it would be wonderful. When we met back up with the admission director, he said, that senior you matched us up with was remarkable. He smiled and said, she's a freshman. <laughs> EA gave us what we expected and hoped for, a challenging seminar, structured education that helped develop competent thinkers. We are grateful. <laughs> Mr. Drusinski began this program by acknowledging current trustees and faculty staff. I would like to bookend that by acknowledging another remarkable group, Elgin Academy's current preschool through 12 students. Let's give them a hand. After the shock of the announcement about their school closing, they have truly risen to the occasion. The staff of the 103rd edition of our yearbook made the decision to dedicate the final issue of the Hilltop to all of the incredible past and present faculty, staff, coaches, students, and alumni of Elgin Academy. Allow me to read you from that dedication. Every experience, from acting in the theater to playing a sport, from learning in the classroom to volunteering in the community, has played an essential role in our development. Not only were there academic lessons we learned along the way, but we also formed many great friendships, overcame difficult obstacles, and gained essential values and experiences. No matter where life takes us, these extraordinary experiences will be with us forever, and we should be proud to have been a part of this fantastic place. Although our beloved school may be closing its doors, the spirit of Elgin Academy will forever live on in our hearts. The lifelong impact our Academy has had on every one of us is immeasurable. Here's to the bittersweet end of an era and the bright future that awaits each and every one of us. Let us celebrate the timeless legacy of Elgin Academy and the countless lives it has touched. We can think of no better way to do that than to join together singing the Elgin Academy hymn. The words and music are included on the sheet you were given in check-in. We will give you a moment to locate them.
Long Live Academy. Thank you all for being here today, and please enjoy the rest of your afternoon.